Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to take a self-portrait. Now, like most photographers, I usually on the other side of the camera and I don't particularly like having my own photo taken, but I think it's good experience. And uh, the other thing, it's good to know what settings to use and how to get the best out of it and how to get creative. So uh, we'll go through that. <laughs> If you're new to this channel, I'm Richard Gill. I'm a professional photographer. And on here I give tips and tricks to help you take better photos, have more fun with your camera. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, why not consider subscribing to the channel? So without any further ado, what are the settings you're gonna use? Now, usually the biggest problem is because you're not behind the camera, you can't control the focus. So this is what I recommend you do give yourself the best chance of getting everything in focus. So what I do on my Sony a7 III is I set the focus area to wide. And so that means it's gonna take in the whole scene. Now on top of that, I also set it to recognize faces and have a face autofocus priority. And uh, by doing that then, there's a good chance it'll pick up that there is a face in the photograph and you need to make sure I have the option between human and animal and obviously uh, you want to set that to, uh, to human. And the other thing I do, I, there is a responsiveness setting so I set that to its highest level so hopefully it will uh, pick up any movement and latch onto that. So what's the other thing we should do? Uh, let's talk about the actual camera settings um, now, I would recommend, if you can, choose a reasonably fast shutter speed. So when I say fast, I mean like a hundredth of a second. That'll help to um, freeze any movement that we make, you know, moving our heads and so on as we take the photo. And then aperture. Now, because uh, normally with a portrait, you might want a very shallow depth of field because you want the, uh, the background to blur. But in this case, you want to give yourself a chance of getting um, the person in focus. So I wouldn't go super wide like f1.8 or anything if your lens will allow that. I would stick to something like f4 and then you're giving the best chance of getting yourself uh, nicely in focus. So once you've sorted out your settings, the next thing is to think about the lighting. And uh, I'm going to try and show you uh, I've got my little GoPro here, show you what kind of a setup I'm going to use. So uh, I'm going to be sitting in front of uh, an open window, so I've got natural light falling straight onto my face. And I've got a few other things about, so I've got a, a reflector, I can put that underneath here just to take away the shadows that are under my chin. And uh, a bit later on we'll try some uh, creative stuff as well uh, particularly with long exposures because that's a very easy way to get started with doing some creative self-portraits so what I'm going to do now is exactly as I'm set up facing the window I'm going to set my camera up looking straight at me and take my first shot <laughs> Now, the other big challenge when you're trying to take a selfie is knowing actually what, is, uh, what your camera is looking at and what you look like. So if you've got a modern camera, you pretty much, uh, they usually have a Wi-Fi option on them or maybe uh, even a Bluetooth option, so you can control them on the phone. And in my case, I can actually see what is uh, on my camera on the phone. So I can set myself up. I can then use the remote function uh, to take the picture and what I would normally recommend is you set yourself at least a two second timer maybe even five seconds and that'll give you a chance to get the phone out the frame while the shot is being taken uh, so that is the easiest way you could also do it with uh, um, you can buy yourself a little remote control device 
uh, there are branded ones or unbranded ones fairly cheap and that'd be another way of uh, triggering your shutter so there's a few other things that will really help to make your self-portraits come to life a bit and uh, so one of those is what are you going to think about when you're taking the photo now this might sound a little bit strange but um, one of the things that will make a big difference to you is actually concentrate on something and it comes through in your eyes somehow so give yourself something you want to think about something you want to portray in your image and think about that as you're taking the shot and that will help to uh, uh, to make it come to life lighting we've already talked a little bit about uh, I'm using natural light uh, and, and a little reflector but the other things you could think about is also try and get to know your shape and particularly your face shape. What are your best angles? Are you better turned to one side? Is that the left or the right? Now we all have one eye that is slightly bigger than the other and usually it helps to have that one closest to the camera. So that's something else to think about. And finally, where should you look? And probably the best place to look is look straight into the lens. So don't look over it or of it, but look straight into the lens. And that will usually give you the best looking shot. Now, one other thing you might want to think about is trying to take a selection of images from that once you've got your camera set up. Uh, particularly if you've got your kit lens on and it's got a zoom, you could think about taking a, a head and shoulders close up like I'm going to take. Um, you could take then something more distant so you get a full length portrait. You could also take one with you lying down and uh, you could do one sitting, standing and those sort of things. So give yourself a lot of different options from one camera setup uh, and that'll mean you get a whole load of shots in one go and that's a very efficient way to work. So let's talk about a few creative ideas you could do. So one of the first things you can do is um, a long exposure and you probably want something around two and a half to five seconds. And what you're gonna do is create a multiple exposure effect. So you move, um, in this case, I'm gonna do it just moving my uh, head and turning it from one side to the other. Now it takes quite a few goes and quite a lot of practice to get this right, but simply, Set your camera up. Now you need to make the room dark um, to get that long exposure, to get that five second exposure without ending up with everything overexposed. So probably best to try this indoors in a dark room, not uh, outside on a bright sunny day. And simply set your camera up, get yourself in focus using your uh, phone, make sure your pose is right. And then simply while the exposure is going on, so fire off your shutter, if you've got a five second exposure try and time it so it's half and half so for example look for two and a half seconds straight at the camera and then turn to one side for the remaining two and a half seconds now that will take you quite a bit of practice till you get an effect that you like and you can do it both ways of course and do that kind of a thing and you might want a longer show one thing you're going to have to watch though is try and keep everything else still so they don't get blurred in the photo so particularly your shoulders and the rest of your body but you could do other things like move an arm and uh, you know have it going from one side to the other the other thing that's cool to play around with is a light so you can uh, actually simply use uh, the torch light uh, on the back of your phone as one thing just to create some light and, so and again do that on uh, a longer exposure and have a, have a go at playing around and making some patterns and again I would set like a three or five second exposure and just do some uh, things that look see, if you, see what interesting patterns you make and using things like coloured sweet wrappers you know the cellophane coloured sweet wrappers putting them uh, putting them over your um, little torch on your on your camera phone um, will create some different colors as well so that's another interesting thing to play around with one of the other things I, I have a little uh, light that I use for illuminating products and things when I'm doing some product shots so it's also a little uh, backup video light these are quite cheap you can use those and you can do some cool stuff like drop it into uh, put this on uh, 
and then I uh, drop it into the bottom of the cup so it's shining up and then create an effect where the light is now going to shine onto my face or something else that you might have interesting you could have it shining onto a book for example. So those are three different things you can you can play around with. I'd love to see the results you get so do share those in the Facebook group Nifty 50 Photographers and there's a link to that in the description. Now if you've enjoyed this video please uh, do give it a like. I hope you've enjoyed playing around and you've got some really great self-portraits and if you want some more tips on how to take better photos don't forget I have a free ebook 50 tips to uh, improve your photography which there is a link in the description and uh, you can download that from there. In the meantime go and have some fun with your camera and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.